We're working in intermediate algebra. This is section A.1. It's in the very front of your book. Uh, starts on page one. The topic is absolute value equations. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what is absolute value. If I could spell it correctly. Absolute value. <laughs> Absolute value is depicted by uh, vertical bars around a number or statement. And they simply are an operation asking you to identify how far or how many units away from zero the expression inside the bars is. So the absolute value of two is two because it's two units away from zero. The absolute value of negative two is also 2 because it is 2 units away from 0. Absolute values are a distance measurement so they are always positive. The expression inside the bars can be negative but once the operation is completed the result is positive. So you can see just by looking at this that there are actually two different expressions that have the same absolute value. There's a positive expression and there's, a, there's a ne the negative counterpart of that expression, but they both come out to have the same absolute value. So example one asks us to solve the absolute value of x equals four. So what number can I put inside this bar to, that has an absolute value of four? And we can see from the previous example, there's actually two options that will have the same absolute value. So to uh, set up equations for this, you first take whatever's inside, that would be x, and you make it equal to whatever's on the other side. So that would be one of your solutions. And then you take the opposite or the negative part of this, what's inside. So that would be negative x equals 4. Um, and then to simplify that x, we get x equals negative 4. Now, there are actually um, a couple different ways to think about this and sometimes a shortcut is to make this x equal to what's on the other side and make this x equal to the negative of what's on the other side which is the same as this result and sometimes that's a little bit faster because you don't have to do this uh, division part here. Okay example 2 is on the top of page 2 it says the absolute value of x plus 3 equals 2. So to solve this, we're going to take the guts, what's inside the absolute value, and we're going to set up two different equations, x plus 3 equals 2, and then we're going to take x plus 3 equals negative 2. And that's, um, that's to take into account that there are actually two options for what's inside here that could equal 2. So we put the negative on this side only because it's easier. Um, and you get two equations. When you solve an absolute value equation, there are two options. So you just take what's inside, you make it equal to the right, then you take what's inside, you make it equal to the opposite of the right. And then you isolate x. So to isolate x here would be subtract 3, and we get x equals negative 1. Same thing over here, subtract 3, but this time x equals negative 5. And these are both the correct solution. For example 3, we have solve the absolute value of 4x minus 1 equals 6. We're going to do the same thing we did on the previous example. We're going to set up two equations, 4x minus 1 equals 6, and 4x minus 1 equals the opposite, or negative 6. And then we're going to isolate the x. First add 1, so that gives you 4x equals 7. Then divide by 4, and you get x equals 7 over 4. Same steps over here, first add 1, you get 4x equals negative 5, then you divide off that 4, you get x equals negative 5 over 4, and these are both correct solutions. Now one thing I do want to draw your attention to, this one says 7 over 4, this one does not say negative 7 over 4. Very seldom are these the same number with opposite signs, and I know a lot of students will take a shortcut and just solve one and then assume 
that the other one is just the negative of, of the one solution, and that is generally not the case. Do not take s s shortcuts that actually are not correct. You have to set up two different equations because these do not usually turn out to be negatives of each other. Example 5 is on the top of page 3. I'm sorry, example 4. It says the absolute value of x over 5 equals 10. So we're going to set up two equations. x over 5 equals 10 and x over 5 equals negative 10. And then to isolate this x, since this is division, we use multiplication to get rid of that 5. So we're going to multiply by 5 both sides. This 5 cancels, reduces, we get x equals 50. We'll do the same thing over here on the right. Multiply by 5 both sides. These 5 reduce, we get x equals negative 50. And this is a case, the, the very, very rare case, where your two answers actually are opposites. And the only time this really happens is when we're dealing with multiplication. So uh, we got x equals 50 and x equals negative 50. Example 5 asks us to solve the absolute value of 2x plus 7 over 3 equals 7. So we're going to set up two equations. 2x plus 7 over 3 equals 7 and 2x plus 7 over 3 equals negative 7. Now, to solve this, we need to first multiply by 3 to undo that denominator there. So we're going to multiply by 3. You can make it 3 over 1, then a 3 over there on the right. Those 3's reduce. We have 2x plus 7 equals 21. Subtract the 7, 2x equals 14, divide by 2, and you get x equals 7. And that's one of our solutions. I am going to venture to say this one does not come out to be negative 7, so you need to go through. It's all the same steps. You're just starting with a negative 7 instead of a positive 7. So um, I'm actually going to draw a line here, scroll over just a little bit, and we're going to do the same steps. We're going to multiply by 3 first. That makes those 3's cancel. So we have 2x plus 7 equals negative 21. Subtract the 7. 2x equals negative 28. And divide by 2. And we have x equals negative 14. And you can see they actually are not opposites. We have x equals 7 here and x equals negative 14 here. And they're both valid solutions. All right, example 6 is at the top of page 4. It says absolute value of x plus 2 plus 14 equals 4. So before we can take this out of the absolute value and make our two equations, we have to isolate this absolute value. So we're going to get this plus 14 off as the first step by subtracting it. All right, that makes that cancel. We have absolute value of x plus 2 equals negative 10. When you add these, you get a negative 10. And this creates an issue for us because absolute value is a distance measurement. How far is this from 0? A distance cannot be negative. There are no absolute values. There's no number I can put in here that when I take the absolute value, it's actually going to come out to be negative 10 because absolute values always come out to be positive. They're always positive numbers. Um, because of this negative over here, when I isolated the absolute value, I can, I can already tell that there are no solutions here. There is no number that I can substitute in there that will give me an absolute value of negative 10. Um, if you don't believe me, you can go ahead and make your two equations. They would say x plus 2 equals 10 and x plus 2 equals negative 10. Um, solve or isolate x, we get x equals 8 
and x equals negative 12. If you take that 8 and you put it in here, 8 plus 2 is 10, the absolute value of 10 is positive 10, not negative 10. So that 8 doesn't work because it doesn't give you the correct absolute value. If you put a negative 12 in here, negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10, but the absolute value of negative 10 is also positive 10. So these are also not equal. So neither one of these solutions work. That is why the, co the correct answer here is no solution. Example 7 is on uh, page 4. Um, this is getting really interesting now because we have absolute value of x plus 1 on the left equals another absolute value, 6x minus 4 on the right. So the premise here is that these two expressions inside could actually be equal like the absolute value of 2 equals the absolute value of 2. Or they could be opposites because the absolute value of 2 is also equal to the absolute value of negative 2. So these could be equal or the same expression, equal equivalent expressions, or one could be the equal to the opposite of the other. And that's going to be the basis of your two equations. So first, the two expressions could just be equal. So x plus 1 equals 6x minus 4, and that, that would be the first equation. Uh, let's just put a, a line here. The second equation, x plus 1, could be equal to the opposite of the other equation, and I'm using parentheses with that negative sign there. Because the opposite of an expression means the negative hits the entire expression, not just the first term. So when you do this, you need these parentheses if there's more than one term on this expression. And your first step here, we're actually going to start over here, but your first step here is going to be to distribute that negative so we actually get the opposite of that expression. So over here on the left, uh, we're going to subtract 1. So we have x equals 6x minus 5. Then we're going to subtract 6x. So we have negative 5x equals negative 5. Divide by negative 5, we get x equals 1. Over here on the right, we're first going to distribute this negative sign. So x plus 1 equals negative 6x plus 4. I'm going to add 6x. So 7x plus 1 equals 4. Subtract 1. 7x equals 3. Divide by 7. x equals 3 over 7. And those are two solu your two solutions. So just to reiterate, when you have two absolute values equal, you can take one expression equal to the other expression, just like we did here, and then take one expression equal to the opposite of the second. And it doesn't matter which side you put this negative on. I, if I wanted to, I could have put it over here. But as long as you use parentheses when there's more than one term, the negative has to hit both terms. And then you just solve them down, isolate x. All right, that's it for this section. Uh, work on some homework. Bring your questions back to class. I'll see you there.